And Friday, July 15, remains the last date on the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC timetable for political parties to conclude on the withdrawal, substitution and replacement of candidates for political uh, positions. Now, while parties have over time adopted zoning of political positions to promote inclusiveness, balancing and equity, the role of religion was also critical, uh, a critical criteria for selecting representatives playing up Christianity and Islam. Now, the recent choice by the All Progressives Congress, APC presidential flag bearer, to settle for uh, a same religion ticket uh, seemed to be causing ripples in the polity. Now, legal practitioner Monde Ubani will be joining us to discuss some of the issues bordering on the Tinubu Muslim Muslim ticket. Good evening, Barista Ubani. So good to have you on the news. Okay, you might have to unmute Good your evening. device. My session to be in the yes, fantastic, Barista Obani, and happy holiday um, still. Happy holiday. Yes, let's dive straight into, the, com into the conversation. Uh, how would you react uh, to uh, the development? Same religious tickets uh, uh, in a country like Nigeria with polarized religious sentiments. How would you react to this development, Barista Obani? Uh, my initial reaction is that it's the right of the candidate and, of course, the political party to choose who uh, becomes their vice presidential candidate. And uh, before that choice was made, of course, there was some uh, level of inter interface and interaction and advice from certain group in Nigeria that the presidential candidate of his APC should be a bit uh, sensitive and try as much as possible to reflect uh, the necessary balance that is requisite in the system, uh, which has been uh, the practice from 1999 uh, to date. Of course, you remember that Obasanjo, who comes from the South, uh, chose a Muslim and, and a Northerner uh, in 1999. Uh, same with uh, Yerada that took over. Yerada chose a Southerner who happens to be a Christian. When Jonathan himself became the president, he chose a Northerner who is a Muslim. Uh, Buari had every opportunity to have chosen uh, Chagaban as his vice presidential candidate uh, in 2015. Uh, the Chagaban himself said that he felt that it was wrong for them to have done uh, that by pairing themselves being Muslim, Muslim ticket. Uh, so I, I don't know what has changed uh, in 2023 uh, that is uh, forthcoming that they have now to choose a Muslim, Muslim ticket. You know, to me, it's clearly a sign of being insensitive and may have, may have their reason, but it also widens the the choice of the of the populace, you know. So it's clearly a, a healthy development, if you ask me, that the people have their choice now to make. Having have all the parties now choosing their their presidential candidate and their vice presidential candidate, so we now have to sit down and look at all of them, uh, one and look all look at the all the parameters that we should use to judge our leaders is very important and our eyes are quite open this time around that we'll be able to make the kind of choice you know that we'll be able to uh, move this country forward that is what i would say with regards to the choice of APC. having said that boris told bonnie uh, how well will you situate the argument about um, using merit to choose um, our leaders vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the argument about ethnic zoning religion zoning and the uh, federal character how would you situate this argument I am for merit at all time. I'm looking for a situation where we have the kind of leadership uh, that will take Nigeria out of doldrums. But the only problem in Nigeria is that Nigeria is a heterogeneous society. It's a you know, multi-religious and multi-ethnic group, uh, groupings here in the country. And over time, even our leaders have recognized the diversity and have even imputed in the constitution. Is there in the constitution? If you look at the directive principle of state policy, is there in chapter two where issue of federal character is allowed to be reflected in appointment because the issue of our unity is not negotiable. We should have a united country. So carrying everyone along becomes a responsibility of those who are in power. It has been the, the norm. Now, even under the political party arrangement, uh, from 1999 on that when PDP was dominant political party, they also ensure that there was an understanding south after eight years of south power went back to 
uh, not. And that is not South balancing. And also, the two major religions have always uh, uh, come into, into consideration, seriously. But the only point I want to emphasize that the present leadership of the country has accentuated, has actually increased the awareness of our diversity and, and most of these fault lines. It has actually increased the awareness of it. That it becomes very suicidal for anyone to say it does not matter uh, when it comes to looking at the two dominant religion in making a uh, choice of who occupies our sorrow. Now you have a rel one religion now being the, the president and vice, if eventually this part political party wins. I don't think that, that it goes down well with you know many persons in the country, especially People from the uh, from the Christian uh, uh, group they, they look at it as being insensitive as, as they have no competent and and, and meritorious uh, individual from the Christian fold in the northern region. That 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 is what it portrays. If you are telling me the argument now that has been pushed pushed forward is that oh we, we chose uh, Shetima because he's very competent and because he's capable and reliable. The opposite of that is that we don't have any Christian who is nepis in the north, who is capable, who is competent, who is reliable. There is no other interpretation anyone can give to that assumption. There is no other interpretation. We are too intelligent for anyone to tell us any other story other than that. You know, Barry Salbani, like you alluded in your opening remark, it is the prerogative of, of the candidates to decide whoever uh, they choose uh, to become their vice. Uh, it is a prerogative. However, uh, let's move on the conversation. Oshun governorship election is on Saturday. After then, it will be the general elections. Uh, what type of electoral reform would you be advocating uh, for the electoral system going forward, Barry Salbani? Apart from the Electoral uh, Act itself for 2022 that actually reduced the level of human uh, interference and interface in the electoral process, which is good, uh, which certainly will enhance uh, credibility in the process, there are some other things that I need, need to do in order to uh, checkmate some of the uh, pitfalls. What happened in AKT was that when they built the, the boot, the voting booth, you know, in the world. They must build it in such a manner that you can stay where you are to mark whoever your candidate is. And then don't allow them to come out to show uh, the politicians who they have voted for. We should also emphasize that they should not enter into the booth with their telephone because most time they go into that particular booth to snap who they have voted for in order to go and collect money from the uh, from the politician, the so issue of vote buying, uh, I need must must consciously make an effort to take into cognizance this factor, because issue of vote buying came so strong during the last election. Now that we have reduced the human interference and manipulation and rigging in the process, now it is uh, transmission is done electronically uh, to the center. We should now remove the human element of vote buying. And how do we do that is now in the construction of the polling booth uh, unit so that we build it in such a manner that the person will stay there and you know do the entire thing without coming out at the same time don't have access to phone while doing that that is one of the things i will recommend in the subsequent election that is taking place in uh, in uh, in osho and of course the general election that will take place in 2023 we must do everything even as we study the process you know, look at implementation of the new electoral act and look at some of the pitfalls and you know some of the issues that will crop up. We now try and build against them. And one of the things I've suggested is that in building where we vote, people will vote, let's make sure that people will go in there and complete the entire process without having access uh, to any person before he can cast his vote. That is one of the things I think I saw as a as a as a minus in the last election, which we now have to work against. Fantastic, Barrister Banya. I think um, we're looking forward to a system that will completely eliminate um, human interference uh, going forward. Thank you so very much for joining us on the news.